Adventure racing is a global sport where the arena is earth. Its races and rules are simple and brutal. A team climbs, skis, cycles, and kayaks across a course hundreds of miles long. First team across the line wins. If you want to be the best in this sport, you need to suffer. Now we're hiking again for 20 hours. You have to survive. That's the first priority. It's about surviving. By 2014, Swedish racer Michael Lindnord and his team had raced in more than 40 countries on six continents, reaching as high as sixth in the world. In the fall, the team was set to enter the biggest event of the year, the World Championships in Ecuador. Our main goal was to be ranked number one and win the World Champion. We were all well prepared, and I think we went into Ecuador um, pretty confident. Four hundred thirty five miles, reaching fifteen thousand feet, spanning thirteen different climate zones and winding through Amazon jungle. One of the toughest courses in the world. On day four of the race, the team reached a transition area, ready to change disciplines from biking to trekking. Just a few hours behind the leaders, close in race terms, the team's course would suddenly change. In the corner of my eye, I saw, I saw a dog like walk really, really slow like that. His fur was kind of like mangy, had some flies like buzzing around his eyes. He had a really big sore like on the top of his back. He just was dirty. He walked around just trying to get food, uh, but since he looked so miserable, he was bleeding a lot from his back. No one wanted, wanted him around. My thought was like, oh, don't come close to me because I get all the diseases in the world. But then at the same time, I think to myself, no one can ever be nice to this fellow. So I took some of my meatballs and I, I put him on the, on the ground just in front of him. As the race continued, the team realized they were not alone. A dog was following us like 20 meters something behind us. And then I looked back again and I saw the dog is coming closer and closer. Every time we look around, he's still with us. If we stop to get out our headlamps or do anything, he kind of stopped with us too and just like kind of kept his distance, but he was definitely following our team. Through dense jungle, deep muck, and steep grade, the dog kept pace. He went through the hardest part of the race with us. He was sometimes stuck, all four feet, just stuck in the mud. You wanted to like pick him out, but he, he just like, took care of himself. Just because of him, it was a little easier because I could focus on something else. I could focus on this little dog fighting as hard as I did. The dog had wounds and will. What he didn't have was a name. Michael, he was walking around there and he was trying a lot of different names. And then he was just like, what about King Arthur? Even if he was wounded and really damaged, but he still had this aura around him. So he, I think he deserved the name Arthur, like a king. Arthur continued by the team side until they reached one of the final stages, the mangrove swamps and the rapids of the Kajamese River. They would board kayaks for the next 34 miles across water. Arthur had reached the end of his road. The race marshals, they told us, you can't, you can't bring the dog. The dog had to stay here. I didn't say anything. 
because I understand that, of course, we can't do a 14 hour paddling with a dog. I understand the difficulties with it. And then we pushed away. I was looking at him and started to paddle. And then I heard like, Poof! Yeah, Arthur had jumped into the water. He came swimming after us. I felt like, we can't leave him now. So I just grabbed him and, and put him in my knee, and I was like, okay, we're doing this together. At that point, we weren't racing for first place or second or even third. It was so clear. He was, yeah, part of us. There was something bigger in taking care of this dog than winning. On day six, Arthur followed his team across the finish. They came in 12th. By the time they crossed the line, another challenge was waiting. Arthur's survival. The Ecuadorian team, they had heard about this story along the course, and they came up to us and they told us that you guys realize that if you don't bring the dog back, uh, he will be killed here. It's the culture here. I remember we walked to our hotel and Arthur was with us. And I called Helena and I think I, I want to take him home. He felt something with, with Arthur and he couldn't leave him. He just wanted to, to help his friend. Arthur would continue his journey. 6,450 miles more to Sweden, where he would get the medical care that he needed. And by the spring of 2015, after four months in quarantine, the dog, who almost never made it out of the jungle, had finally found a home and a family. He's so clever. He's so smart. Arthur, he has, he has a heart. You know, he's a part of family. Mommy. It's difficult to explain the bound, but there's something special. The things happen maybe once in a lifetime, if you're lucky. It's the single best thing I've ever done. <laughs>